This is Manjaro 1608 XFCE edition. I've tried using Manjaro frequently ever since the 0 0.8 release, and I've always found something wrong somewhere along the line that prevented me from using it as my main distribution. However, this time I felt more confident than ever in installing it on my internal drive and at least giving it a chance. Now, this is not the way it looked by default. I've made some changes in the desktop. I covered tweaking the XFC desktop extensively in my video about Kubuntu 1604, so I'm not going to repeat all of that, but here's a quick overview of what I did to go from the way it was to the way it is now. And the first thing I'm going to do is to move the bottom panel to the top by unlocking it and dragging it with the handle on the left. Then I'm going to lock it again and I'm going to add another panel on the bottom, adjust the size to match the top panel and make it 100% of the width and I'm going to lock that and I'm going to start adding items. I'm going to add a show desktop icon, a separator, window buttons, another separator, and a workspace switcher. That's what I have in this list. I'm going to close that. I'm going to right click on the separators and expand them so the window buttons automatically go to the middle of the panel no matter how many there are. And I'm going to add two more workspaces for a total of four. Now I'm going to start removing items from the top panel that I added to the bottom panel. Like the window buttons. The show desktop icon. The workspace switcher. I'm going to right click on the desktop, go down to desktop settings, and choose a different wallpaper. And I'm going to center it so the logo disappears. I'm going to get rid of that shadow under the top panel. I found out in order to do that, I can go to the compositor and unclick show shadows under dock windows. That's that one. And the shadow is gone. Now I'm going to turn the whisker menu the right way around so the categories are on the left. Then I'm going to go back to desktop settings and get rid of those icons. Now I'm going to change the time settings. I'm going to enter my time zone as America slash Chicago. And I'm going to change the time format to a custom format. To do that, I need help on all of those little codes. And this took quite a bit of time, so I'm going to truncate the process. This is how it looked when I was finished. It reads Sunday, September 4th, 2016, 2.21 a.m. And these are the codes that got me to that point.
Now I'm going to start adding launchers to the top panel. They always end up on the right. I added quite a few. These little vertex icons are quite fashionable, but they don't tell me very much. I have a hard time knowing what they symbolize, and they slow me down, so I'm going to go back and change the icons to the familiar GNOME icons. And then I'm going to move those over to the left. And that's how I got my desktop to look the way it does now. I had no trouble installing it on my internal drive. The Calamaris installer worked perfectly. I noticed that they've got rid of the thus installer. Before I installed it on my internal drive, I installed it on an external drive. And I initially had problems there because I was trying to install it on the third partition of that external drive. And at the point where the Calamaris installer tries to see what drives are available, it just got confused and stalled and I couldn't get anywhere. Perhaps it would have worked out if I had waited a while, but I got impatient. And so what I did is I erased the external drive completely and was able to install Manjaro successfully on about a sixth of it as the very first thing installed on that drive. After I found that it was working, I installed it on my internal drive. And one of the things that gave me confidence is that the network manager worked perfectly. I understand that some people have had problems with an update, and I'm watching for that, but I haven't had that problem myself. Another reason I was encouraged is that I was easily able to use my HP printer scanner all-in-one You should be able to hear it whirring in the background. I had to install SimpleScan, uh, but once I did, it worked perfectly. I'm going to save that document. And as you can see, it turned out perfectly. I did have problems with image scan for Linux. Trying to use my Epson V300 scanner, I was able to install the software 
but I wasn't able to get it to work. This would normally be a stop sign for me, but I'm so close to having it working that I'm going to do a little more research before I give up completely on that one. Otherwise, I've had no problems. I've been able to get the software I wanted from the repositories, including the AUR. I was able to download Simple Screen Recorder easily. I also installed OpenShot, the video editor, As you can see, I've been working with it. I was able to install GNOME boxes. And I was able to get that to work. I'm not going to show you anything extensive here, just to show you that it's working. I also had no trouble in getting a few specialty applications that are perhaps not used by a large number of people, which I use, like MuseScore. And LibreCAD. It isn't necessarily characteristic to show you the resource use when I have Simple Screen Recorder running, but even with Simple Screen Recorder running, uh, I still have plenty of resources left. I'm using about 23-24% of my CPU capacity, about 17% of my memory, and zero swap. Here's the terminal emulator. That's giving me similar numbers. <clears throat> One thing you can see about this terminal emulator is that it's transparent. And for that reason, you can't really use it very effectively. It's an interesting effect but I think I'd probably like to change that. Transparency 70%. I'm gonna make it, yeah. I'm going to make it 100% opaque. Or I could just say use solid color. Either way, it's a lot easier to use this way. So I guess the question is, would I recommend this for everyone? And I think the answer would be no. It's probably still a little bit tricky for the new user, although it has a lot of easy to use features. I think for the new user, I would still probably recommend 
Linux Mint, or Ubuntu Mate, or XFCE. But I've personally been quite happy with it, and uh, should something happen to change my mind, I'll let you know. This is XRAM Tech. Thanks for watching.